Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Fridays with Feldman. And um, we've, we're back. I've been uh, taking a break from these Fridays with Feldman because I have nothing much to say. I think I said it all for a while. Uh, but there's a lot to say again. And I, I'm going back to an old topic, uh, the spine and achondroplasia, because it's a problem. I think that people aren't hearing us, or, and we're publishing about this. My partner, myself, uh, Dr. Hari Haran, and myself have published on this topic. And I think we're still not treating this worldwide uh, correctly. So I'm just going to go through some of the things that people should know who both treat achondroplasia or have family members with achondroplasia or themselves have achondroplasia. Achondroplasia is a very common dwarfing syndrome, but it's not common enough because it's, you're talking about one in 20,000 births. So um, I, I thought about that, in, you know, 15,000 births are, are delivered, deliveries at NYU per year when I was there with, with all the hospitals, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Long Island, I think it's about 15,000 births. So in all their hospitals, they're not gonna have one child with achondroplasia born per year. That's not very common. So perhaps we have to teach a little bit about this. So what is the problem with the spine? Well, there are two problems. And the reason I'm gonna talk about this is because this is not something I treat, but it's something I know about. A baby with achondroplasia was born. You have a child, you have a niece, you have a nephew, or you have a grandchild with achondroplasia or a friend's child. And what are you worried about in the first year of life? This. You're worried about the, the, as a spinal cord exits the, the skull, it being compressed, because what does that cause? That causes sleep apnea. And for those adults who have sleep apnea, you know that sleep apnea is quite dangerous. That's why many people are on BiPAP at night. They're, they're forced to breathe so they don't stop breathing while they're sleeping. Adults know this can cause heart attacks and strokes. Well, in young people, they could have actually sudden death while they're sleeping. So sleep apnea is a big deal. Hypotonia just means weakness. Now, the problem with this is that the foramen magnum that this stenosis, this tightness at the level where the spinal cord exits the brain, is um, an area that will be compressed in a child with, achond with achondroplasia from the zero to three. The problem is if you don't get treated by the neurosurgeons, if they have that, if they have sleep apnea, then it can damage the spinal cord. And this is a normal spinal cord. That is the damage to the spinal cord itself. And then it's too late to treat. So the person's 10 years old or eight years old, they no longer have compression of the spinal cord as it exits, but the damage has been done. So they may always have sleep apnea. They may actually need BiPAP for the rest of their lives. While if they've been treated when they were infants, they would not need anything. So it's something that has to be treated in infancy. And although I don't treat this, I send this to our neurosurgeons, Dr. Asadi here. I treat to NYU, I still send it to NYU even though I'm in Florida, if the kids are in New York and elsewhere around the country, but they have to be done because if you wait and there's damage to the spinal cord, then the sleep apnea may not go away. So I have my infants tested for sleep apnea who have achondroplasia, and if they have sleep apnea and it's known to be neurogenic, they get an MRI of their spine. If it shows compression, they are decompressed. That is the rule. Please do not wait because catastrophic events occur in achondroplasia at all ages. And I think we can avoid these catastrophic, catastrophic events. Okay, I've shown this slide before. This is what happens if you don't treat a, uh, spinal stenosis in achondroplasia. So what is spinal stenosis? This is now the second problem that occurs in achondroplastic spines, the thing that I treat the most commonly. And I've shown this picture before. It is basically the spinal cord or the spinal roots going through the, the tunnel of the spine, the bone, and there's not enough room. So either all the nerve roots get smashed up or they just can't get through. And that causes paralysis. So spinal stenosis is an insidious problem. What does insidious mean? It's progressive, slowly progressive. So what are the questions that we ask? And I take, if you could take a picture of this next slide I'm gonna show, that would be great. Or email me at dfeldman at paleoinstitute.org and I'll send you this questionnaire that should be asked of every child or adult with achondroplasia. Do you experience weakness in your legs and or do you routinely have numbness or tingling in, in your legs when you walk? Do you have urinary or fecal incontinence? Can you not hold your urine in? Can you not feel your, when yourself when you go to the bathroom? Are you limited in how far you can walk because your legs become numb or weak? Do you find yourself squatting after you're walking, meaning you're walking along a certain distance and then you squat? And also, are you limited to how far you can walk? For instance, many times I'll ask high school students who say, yes, two years ago when I came in ninth grade to high school, I could walk the football field twice, and now I can only go halfway. Well, that's a problem. 
That means something is happening. Now, it's not usually arthritis in the legs. It's usually something going on with their spine. So this is the questionnaire that I ask all my patients to fill out every time they come in who have achondroplasia. Not every if they're coming every week, but certainly if they're coming in every six months. They should ask themselves these questions because spinal stenosis treated early is completely reversible. Treated late, there could be real sequelae. Someone can't hold their urine in. They're not strong enough to walk. They have to be wheelchair bound. They have to use a walker. Avoidable, completely avoidable. And how we treat it, well, sometimes we just decompress and this is what it looks like. And sometimes there's a kyphosis, means the back is very round. There's a 30 year old and she came in with acute you know, paralysis. And this doesn't matter for anybody really, but it just means that there's no area for the spinal roots to come. There's no water there, there's no white left. So they're just coming down and they're being squished, squished, and squished, so in two and three areas. And so she was decompressed and effusion. I'm not talking about fusions today, why? Sometimes we have to use you know, screws and sometimes we don't. But the bottom line is it's treatable and she's walking and doing her yoga and running. And babies with, with, with achondroplasia can have a little bit of kyphosis as well and we let them go at their own pace when they want to walk. But the bottom line is there's no age for this. There's no age too young to have stenosis. So I sometimes see 10 year olds, 10 year old spinal stenosis. Why? I have no idea. Youngest I've ever seen. Then I have some 50-year-olds who come in, 60-year-olds who come in. I just treated a 60-year-old who had progressive paralysis. We got it back again somehow, luckily, right? I mean, but still not to normal because I could have made it normal. So it can occur at any age during achondroplasia. It doesn't necessarily have to occur at 20 years old or 30 years old. Or if someone tells you, well, don't worry about it. He's too young to treat or she's too young to treat. Wrong. You're, you're, you're treated depending upon the symptoms and the MRIs, not treated based on your chronologic age. So this 10-year-old was treated the same way. Stenosis at that kyphosis. So there was stenosis right at this level of this kyphosis. And this 10-year-old had exertional stenosis every time he tried to walk far. And we took care of it at 10 years of age. So, and then there's a 56-year-old man with no neurologic deficit, now has a bag, cannot walk, and basically was never treated because they're scared to be treated, was told they can't do anything about this. It's avoidable. People with, a, with dwarfism, with achondroplasia, this is an avoidable condition. And I think that you need to find the person in your area or come here that can treat achondroplasia, that can treat dwarfing syndromes with spinal problems. So the message is today, as it was last time, be treated, be seen, take the questionnaire. I'm gonna go back to that questionnaire for one minute for you to look, ask yourselves, these questions, are you weak? Are you weaker than you were last year? Are you not able to control your urine? Are you squatting after you're walking? Are you, and you know, for a very short period of time, you're going into Walmart and you're walking along and you got to squat three times. You're shopping in Publix in West Palm Beach and you basically have to squat. That's a problem, guys. It's a problem if your legs are becoming weak. So I leave you with that. Uh, have a great uh, spring. Hopefully we'll be back in about a month to talk, discuss something else. But um, it's Rise with Feldman signing off, and have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.